Hey there, I'm Dr. Ben Schmidt. I'm a GI fellow at St. Louis University. Did you know that St. Louis is consistently considered one of the worst cities in the country for seasonal allergies? In 2011, we were ranked the number one worst city for allergies. Why? A lot of it has to do with where we're situated geographically. Our city is sandwiched between two rivers, making St. Louis a river valley. This makes mold and pollen numbers high. Plus, we have rich plant life both in the spring and the fall, which means lots of pollen. Molds and pollens can make people super miserable. Itchy, watery eyes, sneezing, runny nose, sinus pain. So what can you do about it? Let's go over to SLU Hospital to talk to an expert. Dr. Joe Brunworth is an ENT doctor at SLUCARE right here in St. Louis, and he can help with a lot of great therapies for seasonal allergies. So in your experience, what is the worst time of year for allergies in St. Louis? There's two big times for us, and that's in the spring and the fall. Spring, you've got all the trees blooming, and in the fall, you've got ragweed and all the weeds. So those are our two worst times. And what do you think is the most common allergy that you treat here at SLU in the St. Louis area? I would say probably ragweed is one of our top ones. There's also corn, dust is a big one, mold. Those are probably some of our biggest. And what types of testing can you offer here at SLU to test for allergy? In the ENT department, we do testing. We have an entire allergy and immunology department that does testing. And there are blood draws, but mostly we do the prick style testing that is very specific, tells you exactly which weeds you're allergic to, which trees you're allergic to. And we do that in about, you know, uh, hour and a half, two hours in, uh, in a day and get all your testing done. Are there any potential risks or side effects to the actual testing process? The people that we're testing are people that are highly allergic. Mm -hmm. And so then they are the type of patients that you have to be careful with. We use really micro doses just to check to see first if they're gonna be the type that is really allergic. So the main risk would be that you have some reaction to what we're testing you for. We're trying to see if you're allergic to it, but we're trying not to see that you're so allergic to it that it causes a reaction. Those are the main risks. And then maybe we could go talk about some of the treatments that you can offer here for the allergies? Sure, absolutely. Perfect. We're testing a lot of different materials. Specifically, we're looking at pollens in nature and trees, weeds, all kinds of different pollens that are in the air everywhere. And so we have to be able to adjust the body so it's used to those types of uh, pollens in the nature and allergens, as we call them. A couple of the things that we do here at the SLU ENT department is we do drops. And so allergy drops means you still have to have the testing, but after that, you know, for those patients that don't like needles or um, the drops are actually a fairly easy way of doing it. And so you just ramp up the uh, what the allergens are inside of there. So the first day you only do just one drop. And I've just got water in here, but essentially you would do that under your tongue. So one drop the first day, and then the second day you'd use two drops. And what's inside of here is essentially what you're allergic to. And so we find out, oh, you're allergic to oak, but you're also allergic to dust mites. And you build up all of the different allergens, put them inside the drop, and then you build it up over time, and then your body gets used to them, and then it stops reacting to those that are in the environment. What determines whether you recommend drops versus a more traditional allergy shot? It's a good question. We get asked that a lot. We have a, an entire team that helps work through the patients what's going to be best for them. Shots, which would be your typical kind of allergy shot, you can have more of the uh, allergens in the mix. So if you're allergic to every Everything under the sun, sometimes shots might be better. Although they do, in, in, for example, in Europe, they use drops a lot and they will just put you a few things in here and find that it helps with all of the different allergens. The drops in the US are not approved through insurance and so it ends up being out of pocket. So from that standpoint, some people might lean towards shots, but if they have high deductibles and co-pays, mm -hmm. sometimes they end up saying, well, you know what? It's the same price if I do the drops or the shots. So then I, I don't want shots and so I go with the drops. And so it's a lot of like individual decision making. And this is a list essentially of what we test for. So oak, birch, elm, cedars, cottonwood. So all of the trees that you're seeing blooming in the spring, and then grasses, some people are highly allergic every time they mow the grass or outside in the grass. Ragweed is a big one in St. Louis. That goes down through all of the different weeds, molds. You can check the mold counts online. Some people even have apps and they're like, oh, it's a bad time for mold. Dust mites, corn, of course, in the Midwest. We have to think about cockroach, cat, dog hair, all of those sorts of things. So It's quite the list. Yeah. And are there any potential risks or side effects to these treatments that people should know about? The main issue with uh, allergy shots is one, it might not be effective for you. And so you're going through a lot to find out what you're allergic to. All, oftentimes you can just find out what you're allergic to and try and avoid those things. Dust covers, hypoallergenic pillows and pillowcases and sheets, all of those things. But if you do go through with the shots, there is a chance that it just isn't enough for you. So you still have to stay on your Zyrtec, Allegra, Claritin, Flonase, sinus rinses, all of those. And then other risks would be similar to doing the allergy testing is that you could have a 
reaction. It can be a local reaction or the worst case scenario would be an anaphylactic reaction. So every patient that goes on shots or drops has to have an EpiPen. And so they're ready anytime they're giving themselves a shot to get an EpiPen and then get to an emergency room. What kind of patients do you think would be good candidates to come see you here at St. Louis University for for their allergies? Myself, I personally am a rhinologist. So within ENT, I'm a nose specialist. And so I see a lot of patients with really bad allergies with sometimes nasal polyps, sinusitis. Mm -hmm. All of those patients, we're trying to treat them individually. As, a, as an individual patient, you're gonna look at their, their whole picture. And so if one of those pictures is they have allergic rhinitis, seasonal allergies, or maybe it's year-long allergies to mold or dust, or if they have a cat or a dog, mm -hmm. We don't ever tell patients you have to get rid of your cat or dogs. We say, no, we can, we can work with this. And so we're gonna get you tested, um, check those things, and then get you on the proper treatment. That's perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. Yeah, nice uh, chatting with you, Ben. Absolutely.